What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 23 and we're starting today's episode off with some player training as Ollie free drills sure is uh, continuing to get the free drills and as you'll see now he's now 75 rated as well and has finally got that gold card on ultimate team. He said he tweeted out to EA at the start of the season said seriously EA still a silver come on now and uh, finally he's got that gold card for uh, his UT. He'll get his own player card I'd imagine and uh, I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm going to stop training uh, short as much as I am as well because right now you know the kid's just 17 years old already 75 rated he's grown like what 15 ratings uh, since we've got him out of the academy and uh, you know I, I do feel like right now we're sort of we're giving him a bit too much training and it, it, I said before it's it's weird how his acceleration has, still hasn't grown it, it's 55 yet his sprint speed is now something like 80 and it's just it's just a weird opposite to be honest so I think from now on I'm going to sort of ease him out of the drills a little bit probably duck him down to two or perhaps one still give him a bit of training but uh, not not quite as much so I've been giving him because he's he's been getting trained like a madman right now, man. Seriously, he never leaves the gym. Well, he's sure <laughs> not whilst I'm still there. I'm like, no, nope, number ten laps, mate. And uh, yeah, so sure he's going to uh, have a little bit less training from now on, I think. And also we got a player out of our academy as well. Luke Gallagher came to me and said he uh, he thinks he deserves a pro deal. He's ready for the first team. And I was like, okay, mate, you're 52 overall, so I highly doubt that. But fair enough. I don't want to lose you because your potential is good. But he's got one star, one star skill moves. This kid can't even do a bloody ball roll. One star skill. I mean, a five-star weak foot's nice, but one-star skill moves. The guy can do literally everything with left foot and right foot. Can take corners with both feet, yet can't do a step over. Brilliant. But also, we sent our free scouts out. I did say a couple of episodes ago, once we got out of the transfer window, I would send our free scouts out. Uh, once again, we're going to England for nine months, as we'd always go to the nation we're currently managing in. Uh, one of our scouts is going to France for six months, and I will send my other scout out to the Ivory Coast uh, three months as well. Uh, I did say, obviously, last season we stuck to the British Isles and also the Republic of Ireland as well. I said from season two onwards we'll start looking a bit further afield. Of course we will stay in the same nations the club we're managing as we always do but uh, I feel like France is a good one. You know that's obviously the country right south of us in England and uh, right south of us. <laughs> right south of us really. Uh, France is right south of us in England and uh, Ivory, Coast, uh, Ivory Coast is even further south of us uh, in Africa just to change things up a little bit and uh, we'll see what players we get from the Youth Academy there. Still, uh, after that weird introduction, uh, first game of today's episode is against Bournemouth. Uh, the Cherries, Eddie House, I come to take us on at Bramwell Lane. And on the back of that humiliating 4-0 defeat away against Leicester City, made some changes heading into the game. One of those changes was this guy, Ivan Tony, getting a start and making it count as well. But don't break your back, mate, because we're going to need you this season with that celebration. Wonderful first touch to send his man walking. It's worth seeing on the replay as he played it backwards, then went forwards. He says, see you later to his man. That was a glorious first touch and what a finish as well you know Tony he really does remind me of a player I used to have in a former career mode of mine in the sense that every time he's got the ball he's got such great ball control and I just feel so at ease when the ball comes into his feet as well and that player it was uh, was uh, my hero in my FIFA 15 career mode of West Brom PSG and Arsenal and by Niang whenever he gets whenever he got the ball I felt so comfortable using him and that's exactly how I feel with Tony yes the rating is far lower than Niang was but very similar play style even though Nia of course had those lovely four star skills and Tony only has the three anyway 1-0 Bournemouth got back on the turns through Borges our poor defending continued but 11 minutes after the restart great chance to go back in front wonderful run by Ollie Shaw picks out John Fleck who really should have made it 2-1 straight at the goalkeeper I had far more time there than I realised as it was still 1-1 but all the play in the second half was coming through that left hand side and coming through Ollie Shaw he was giving Stacey a real run around beats him there turns inside rolls it into Tony can he get his second goal of the game no fabulous save by Varela, cleared away by the Cherries, it was still 1-1 and our final chance fell late on, once again attacking down the left with young Ollie Shaw into Ravel Morrison, off the bench, turns Jefferson Lerma plays it into the middle, there's Lise Mousset but Metham deflects the shot behind for a corner and my reaction on the sidelines said it all, what a golden opportunity for us to get our first Premier League win of the season in this game. Chance after chance after chance in the second half, but could not get that finishing touch applied and get that second goal. Final score, 1-1. It's our first Premier League point of the season, so positives there, of course. As you see there, Shaw does now go down to two drills, and uh, Tony gets an extra one now, so they've both got two drills each as Bogle gets the third and final drill, uh, sorry, fifth and final drill. 
But either way, it's missed opportunities. You know, it's it's missing those chances that simply put isn't going to see us stay in the Premier League. If you want to stay in the top flight, draws aren't going to cut it. You need wins, and quite frankly, that should have been a win there. One one the final score, and again, yes, it's perspective. It's our first Premier League point. I guess after a run of four straight defeats, we can't be too critical. But ultimately, it should have been all three. Anyway, second game of three today, and we take on Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park, and what a chance for team that's in. But again, it's deja vu. John Fleck denied by Geiter from close range as it is still 0-0 in this first half in what was a really scrappy first half as well. Neither side really played good football in the first 45 minutes but in the 41st minute Crystal Palace would get in front and sometimes you just don't get the rubber to green do you? First shot blocked, second shot saved by Henderson it drops to Wilfred Zaha takes a touch and puts it into the back of the net as he's spinning out of control. Zaha with the goal, Palace in front and it's 1-0 it's to the host but you've got to see this on the replay man again sometimes you just don't get the luck. First shot well blocked by McKenna. Second shot brilliantly saved by Henderson but Zaha there. Wonderful first touch and the finish as well. Spinning out of control into the back of the net. Palace in front right before the break. So 1-0. They have a chance to go into the half time tied though at 1-1 and we should have done as well. Uh, Shaw down left hand side cutting inside rolling it through to Robinson. Lovely little dink finish there to catch Geiter off guard but unfortunately the goal was disallowed through the lines was offside flag and it was the correct decision as well. No need for VAR for this one. Lionel gets it right first time and he was definitely offside. Sacco stepped up just on time and as you can see Robinson was indeed offside. So 1-0 at the break. Again, neither side have played particularly well in the first half and I felt we deserved to be on level terms really. And in the second half we could have made it 1-1. Again, Robinson played forward by Shaw. Should have hit the target at least but fires it wide of Geiter's far post as it goes behind for a goal kick and again another missed opportunity. We're correct Creating so many chances this season, but we're lacking the clinical finish. That's what's stopping us from picking up the points. But 10 minutes after the restart, Bogle storms down the right, beats the half pace, continues to run. He's got Tony in the middle. Norwood arrives from deep, who rolls it across, and there is John Fleck to get his second goal of the season and finally get a goal to make it 1-1. Fleck had so many chances in these two games and golden chances too. Third time lucky for John Fleck, drills it past the Spaniard and makes it 1-1. And the boys out of contract link up there for the first goal of the game uh, for us to make it 1-1. Great storming run by Bogle. Lovely ball by Norwood to catch his man out. Sacco closed him down. And there is Fleck with the finish. Two goals already in five games for John Fleck. Great start for our Scottish midfielder. So 1-1 one, one the final score. A draw in this game. Again, missed opportunities. Really could have won the match. Had the chances. But I think 1-1 one, one probably was the right result on the balance of the play. And again, we've stopped the rot. You know, four straight defeats for Sheffield United. We've got to be happy that now we've had back-to-back -back games where we haven't tasted a loss. So, yes, both of those games could have resulted in wins. However, perspective, perspective, trying to be happy, trying to be positive. At least we stopped the rot. Back-to-back -back games without a loss for Sheffield United. But for our third and final game of today's episode, it was the EFL Cup third round as we travel away from home to the Championship side, Middlesbrough, at the Riverside Stadium. By the way, fantastic side for a, uh, a career mode RTG if you guys are lacking inspiration right now. They've got a couple of decent young talent and they've got a real stadium in the game at the Riverside Stadium as well. Definitely worth considering if you're looking for a championship side to do an RTG with. Anyway, the Borough away from home and uh, of course in the EFL Cup this season, that's the only game where we've had a, a, a win. Also, we beat Burnley in the second round of the Cup away at Turf Moor in the last episode. It's so now taking on the Borough, the championship side. Uh, just a one change from the side that beat Burnley and uh, that was Ravel Morrison coming into our midfield trio as he's not been starting many games this season. He would start this one and the first chance fell to us through Aiden White White firing that shot wide the post. And then the 37 minute, another good chance for Sheffield United. Ben Osborne denied by Darren Randolph. So still 0-0. But really, it was all Sheffield United in the first half. You know, the, the, the much-changed side were looking better than our first. And then we'd had seven shots, three of which hit in the target. And 60% possession at the break. We were playing so well, looking completely in control. And that's why five minutes after the restart, this happened. George Baldock trying to cross-field the ball. Hits it straight at Britta Sombolonga. How I failed to get the ball off the ground there with Bulldog trying to crossfield it, I've got no idea. And I've got to blame the auto switch for this one. The ball deflects off a Somba Longa and Basham, it switched. I was controlling Bulldog. And of course, when the ball uh, deflects off a Somba Longa, the auto switch goes to Basham. And I was trying to go left with Bulldog. Instead, I was going left with Basham. He leaves the ball as Somba Longa makes it 1 1. It is, of course, my error for it. A terrible, terrible mistake. But we had three Sheffield United players around a Somba Longa. He won the ball back and put it past Foster. 1 0. Terrible from myself. And Middlesbrough in front against a run of play. 
play in this game. And it was totally against the runner play as well. We've been the far better side. So in the 64th minute, I was relieved to see us get back on level terms. Lovely ball by Cunningham, the kid at the academy, to roll it through to Lise Mousset as the Frenchman gets his first goal of the season doing the Deli Alley celebration there. So 1-1, great finish by Mousset. And of course, we kept hold of him on deadline day after Bournemouth put the bid in. And that's why I like Mousset a lot. He almost got his second goal here in the 77th minute. Great save by Darren Randolph, though, as White then flies in and puts the header onto the roof of the net. It was still 1-1, but how we weren't in front in this game, I've got no idea. We were on fire, looking the far better side. Find a chance, fell to us in the 88th minute, but once again, Darren Randolph pulls off the heroics. Denies Vega, the Argentine, off the bench, and that was how the game would finish. Final score, 1-1, and that means we go straight into a penalty shootout, and I was wondering, would it be as dramatic as the Liverpool-Arsenal one last week? Well, first penalty taken, and it was a good save by Foster. Denies Adam Clayton, and keeps it at 0-0. Lise Mousset would then take our next one, and despite scoring in normal time, he couldn't score from the spot. Darren Randolph continuing his heroics in the shootout, and British Sombolonga, who did score in normal time himself, would get a goal from 12 yard sends Foster the wrong way and it's 1-0 to the Borough as they score the first penalty of the shootout Pele would then take our next one it was an awful penalty there right down the middle and Randolph makes it back to back saves as it's still 1-0 and it should have been 2-0 Foster sent the wrong way from the follow up penalty but put wide of the post so it's still 1-0 hadn't scored a penalty in this shootout as Ravel Morrison would take our third one only one had been scored out of five total but Morrison said let's, get, let's make that two as he puts it into the side net end as we finally get off the mark from 12 yards Johnny House will take the next one, sends Foster the wrong way as the Borough retake the lead and go 2-1 up. Vega would then take our next one, the Argentine, the 18-year-old off the bench in his first appearance for the club. Ah, oh, hits the top of the crossbars, it sails into orbit. One penalty scored from four taken and that meant that Ryan Shotton could send the Borough into the fourth round of the EFL Cup if he could beat Ben Foster from 12 yards, which he would do. Sends the veteran the wrong way. Final score in the shootout, 3-1 to the Borough. We scored one penalty out of four. And despite the worst ever penalty shootout celebration ever, Middlesbrough are into the fourth round of the EFL Cup. Darren Randolph made save after save after save in this game. We should have won it, but instead, missed chances, missed opportunities. What's the opposite of clinical? Because that's what we are right now. Totally terrible in front of goal. Another game which we should have won and instead end up failing to get the win. And we're out. Middlesbrough through to the next round and our progress in the FL Cup ends in the third round. But that was today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for joining me. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy the episode, then please drop a like. Much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode where hopefully I won't have to take any more penalties very soon.